attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Roy Ryer from SEOTrainingSW.com, and I'm real excited today. Uh, we're going to have a, a webinar. Our webinar today is about SpyFu and using SpyFu for keyword research, keyword difficulty, and things uh, like that. We have the uh, actually we have the founder and president of SpyFu who's going to be our guest today, uh, talking about SpyFu. So I'm real excited about that. Uh, but before we begin the webinar, we still have some people calling in. Uh, we have about 125, 130 people that registered for today. Uh, you know, typically we have these during the daytime or, uh, you know, we don't have that high of a, uh, you know, group signing up. But there will be a replay of this for those of you that might be working or have something else that they're doing, can't uh, be attending this live. Um, but a few, you know, things I do want to mention before we do begin our webinar. Uh, those of you that are not familiar uh, with our website, seotrainingsw.com, uh, we have a whole bunch of free SEO training videos like we're going to be doing here with the web this webinar today. Um, and, you know, our, we have a lot of free stuff on our website. You see that little arrow pointing up to uh, an area on our menu called, say, saying free SEO training. Uh, we have This is the area where we have our webinar replays. Uh, and we also have uh, some other SEO training, uh, beginner to advanced. So uh, those of you that are not familiar to, of our website uh, want to get some free SEO training, uh, by all means, you know, please visit our site and see some of the stuff we have. Um, one favor that I do ask from you, however, is that you can see we put a lot of time, effort, and money into having these free webinars. So if you're watching this webinar, uh, you know, as a recording or if you're on the call now, Really, one of the few things we ask from you is, you know, please, please share the love. Uh, on this particular page, this webinar that we're having today, this is the Bud URL link. Uh, I would appreciate if you could go there um, and click on, you know, the Facebook like button. If you do like this presentation today, uh, Google Plus it, share it with your uh, friends and coworkers on LinkedIn, and also tweet about it. In fact, you know, if you're uh, sitting there right there at your computer right now, if you just grab that Bud URL link uh, that I'm showing you here in the screen and just, you know, tweet about it. Say, you know, there's a really great webinar going on right now and it's free on how to uh, use SpyFu and, you know, have your invite your friends in, uh, to uh, participate. Also, we welcome your comments on the bottom of all our pages. We have a little comment area. Um, so, you know, please share your comments, uh, your thoughts about this uh, webinar, any questions you might have. Uh, about this particular webinar, um, and if there's a question that we can't answer, uh, you know, if you're watching this webinar replay later, we'll certainly get this off to uh, Mike's staff and uh, to get an answer for you. You know, please share the love and share your comments. Uh, our next webinar that we're going to be hosting is going to be a week from today, uh, February 12th. Uh, we're going to be doing a webinar on uh, analytics SEO. Uh, this is a uh, basically a, a, a new program uh, that we've been working with the last couple of months. Uh, those of you might be familiar, there's been some recent changes with uh, like Raven, Raven tools and a couple other tools where Google has cut the API. Um, well, this, I don't, I'm not sure how they've done it, but they've been able to uh, kind of circumvent the system per se. Um, so we've been getting a lot of questions uh, you know, since the uh, you know, these problems surfaced with some of these other uh, analytic tools and some of these competitive, other competitive research programs. You know, how do you, uh, what, are your, what are you doing since Google cut this API? So uh, this is what the webinar is going to be on uh, next week, a week from today. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, analytics SEO and uh, some of the really neat things you can do with it. Um, and it really, what, you know, what I'm really amazed about the program, it inter interfaces with your Google Analytics program, but it also kind of piggybacks on uh, your competitors' websites. You just put your competitors' websites, and I'm not sure exactly how it gets the data, uh, but it does get the data and really puts up together some uh, really cool stuff. Um, also, during uh, well, when we get this webinar underway at the conclusion of today's webinar, we're going to uh, Mike is going to uh, be answering any of your questions you might have about keyword research or any particular questions you might have about his uh, program, SpyFu, or in some of the other programs he might introduce to you. So, uh, you know, please, you know, 
jot down your questions that you have. And then at the conclusion of the webinar, uh, we'll ask Mike your particular questions. And then Mike's going to select the best question. And then uh, at the end of the webinar, uh, we'll award that particular person with a free one-hour consultation with us. Uh, hopefully, Mike's ready to get started. Uh, Mike, are you ready on your end here? Absolutely. Okay. So, uh, do you want me to want, do you want me to give you presenter, uh, or do you want me to give Sidra pre, uh, presenter? Because you're on. No, the no, front. definitely give it to me. Okay. That would be best. Okay. Let me do that right now. Those look like some interesting webinars you've got coming up. Competitive intelligence and uh, um, basically rank tracking is near and dear to my heart. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me introduce you, Mike. Uh, you know, to the group is until we figure this out, because I see sure, that you're no, oh, there. Right. Okay, there you are. You're coming you up now. It. Okay, mm -hmm. um, Mike's the uh, founder uh, and president of SpyFu, uh, founder of Velocity Escape and SpyFu, and you know, Mike was awarded Arizona's top entrepreneur uh, under 35, uh, which is really you know a kind of a really cool thing. Um, and this is a quote uh, I got from. Uh, Mike's LinkedIn page. Success is an endless cycle of failures that you can manage to learn from. So, Mike, uh, we do have your presentation up on the screen, and uh, you are the presenter. So, Mike, please take it. Thanks. So, yeah, again, I'm, my name is Mike Roberts. I'm the president and founder of uh, SpyFu. Um, and uh, this is a new presentation. I, actually, every presentation for me is, is new, um, but this is um, extremely new content. Uh, for me uh, and for us. It's basically uh, last, the last two weeks I've been spending um, researching what the ranking factors that go into uh, ranking difficulty, um, that is how hard is it going to be for me to rank on this, um, on, on this keyword. Um, and um, the results of that research are just today as of like noon live on the site. So I thought it would be cool to, to do something extremely timely. It's not exactly just a demo of SpyFu, uh, which is what we sort of talked about, but it's basically about as cutting edge of research as you can possibly have. Um, it's very, 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 uh, very new. Um, real quick, let me, let me tell you about SpyFu. Um, we were started here in, in, um, in actually Scottsdale or, or Cave Creek. Uh, I was actually up in Tatum Ranch. Um, since this is a local crowd, you guys may know where that is. Um, and we were founded in 2005. Um, the, the original product was actually called Goog Spy. Um, and we changed that name to SpyFu when we, when, we when we launched the new one. We're actually the very first competitive intelligence tool prior to SpyFu. Uh, you couldn't, um, if you wanted to know which keywords your competitors were buying or, uh, on Google AdWords or uh, ranking on on Google, you would basically do guess and check, um, and uh, and so when we put that when we put that first product together, it's the first of its kind. Um, since then, you know, we've been in the space, like I said, for for six or seven years, and we've continued to evolve. You know, well, it's not so much just about getting those keywords anymore, is it? It's about figuring out which ones represent the best opportunity and. Um, you know, which ones am I actually going to be profitable on? We want to tell you what you're going to be able to rank on, which ones you're going to be profitable on before you even start so that you're not wasting your time and spinning your wheels. One thing to note is that um, we do no consulting. We make all of our money on um, basically people paying $79 a month um, to use our service. Um, so. From an SEO perspective, so that's, the, that's the audience. We also, of course, do AdWords, and, and, and we specialize in that as well. Um, but from an SEO perspective, the things that we're really good at, what we've really nailed, are how to, how to win SEO budget. We have uh, a platform of reporting called SpyFu Recon Reports that um, basically were designed from the ground up to make you, the SEO, look like a million bucks. The idea is to explain the value and highlight the opportunity so compellingly that clients won't just love the work that you do, but they'll want more of it, right? Um, and then at the end of our presentation, we sort of just say, well, here's what your competitors are doing. They're acting. Now get to work, right? So that's how the whole, you know, the whole 
SPIFU recon document is, is structured. And, um, and when we tell them the value and we highlight the opportunity, we don't talk to them in terms of just ranks and clicks. We actually translate those things into dollars, and we do a really great job of it. Um, so these are the things that we're currently good at. We can ask you, you know, what's your goal? And that should have something to do with money. I'm going to breeze through these things because what I really want to get to is the meat, which is uh, the subject of my research. We help you find your keyword universe. And some of those ways that you can do those is just knowing what they are. Uh, you can also steal them from your, from your PBC campaign. This is a great, a great win because uh, if you look at what your, what your PPC campaign is, the keywords that you rank on already, um, I'm sorry, the keywords that you're buying, but you also rank on, you can, you can easily justify that to your clients or to, you know, your internal, your, your boss or whatever. Um, so we want to look at which keywords you already have traction on, and then we want to combine those keywords into keyword groups, silos, if you will, so that you're not constantly thinking about, uh, you know, the individual keyword telling your client, oh, yeah, we, we lost rank on this on this keyword, you want to talk to them about, well, this is a portfolio of keywords. So we do this stuff, right? We calculate, not, and, uh, you know, like metrics, not just on the keyword level, but also on the keyword group level. Of course, we give you everything, but what you really want to be talking to here, you want to control that conversation with your customer, talking to them about the value you created at a macro level. Um, so when we calculate the size of opportunity, the size of a keyword group, we take into account the keyword search volume, the value per click, like in terms of, um, you know, relative to PPC dollars, AdWords dollars, um, where you're currently ranked, and, and ultimately what your goal is. And we apply the click-through curve. You should probably be familiar with this. Um, but uh, ultimately, um, the idea is that you get more clicks when you're in the number one position than if you're in the number two and number three and so on. Um, we also take into account, you know, number of ads, shopping, video, pictures. Our click-through curve is, is pretty solid. Uh, all these things we're really good at. Um, when you combine all these things together, you can, you can actually tell, talk to people in terms of dollars. So, I mean, managers or entrepreneurs or anybody that you're dealing with doesn't really think in terms of ranks, or if they do, if you can get them to think in terms of ranks, they're going to discount your value because they don't really, they're not, certainly not going to give you a, a, a premium. They're going to discount your value, uh, but if you can talk to them in terms of dollars, it's a huge win. So then we add up all that opportunity and we group them into these, these reports that, that look like this. So that's what we're good at. We're currently very capable of figuring out what opportunity looks like and what value of SEO looks like, and, and we're basically the best that there is. But the place, that we, the place that we suck is when it comes to trying to calculate difficulty. Um, when, this is actually, these are slides ripped from another presentation that I've done. And you notice that there's nowhere in here where I'm talking about a single metric from SpyFu. When I'm telling you, okay, your next step after you cal calculate opportunity is look at the SERP, you know, look at the backlinks, look at SEO Moz, keyword difficulty, blah, 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 right? None of it has anything to do with SpyFu. But imagine what we could do if we knew difficulty. If we not only know the size of the opportunity, but also the difficulty, we could come up with, we could tell you, you know, look, this is not just like a, a big opportunity, but it's easy. You will get these ranks. You will get this traffic. It's a, a low-hanging fruit report that we can produce. Right? There's all kinds of ways that I can, you know, revolutionize this, this stuff if, if I can do that. But right now, I can't. Okay? So the last couple weeks, my mission is, has been to figure out how to quantify this. Okay, so where do we start? Well, my theory is the best, the, the best place to look is to figure out what, what, uh, what affects what affects rankings in the first place? Actually, that should be an AFFECTS, but uh, son of a bitch. <laughs> um, by the way, uh, Roy, chime in if you have any questions. Um, I, uh, I'm, I've got like a little studio audience here to, um, to help me out uh, with, okay. with sort of cues as to whether or not I'm, I'm explaining things right. But 
if you have questions, because some of this stuff is going to become a little bit technical as I go through, you know, Spearman's correlation. Well, I'm glad you asked that, Mike, because <laughs> what, I, what I'd like to ask from our participants in today's webinar, uh, you know, if you do have any questions, please type them into the question box. Uh, you know, Mike will answer the questions. We have a little area during the end of this webinar for any questions you might have. And again, you know, the person that asks Mike the best question, uh, Mike's going to, you know, basically tell me who that person is, and we'll be awarding them one free hour of SEO consulting with the, our company. So, uh, you know, Mike, I don't have any particular questions right now, but you know, I think at the end of the, your presentation, we'll certainly address those. So take it away. Yeah, I'm just about to get into the crazy stuff. All right, here's the so crazy will, stuff, guys. <laughs> all right, here. All right. Uh, so, so hopefully, hopefully, I've explained it well. I've really tried. Uh, I'll tell you what. When I first pres when I when I first wrote an article, like sort of a draft article for for my team, I let I let them look at it, and they're like, "This, this is just offensive. <laughs> I am overwhelmed by this data." And uh, and so so this is sort of my first stab at trying to make this palatable. I'm pretty sure it works. But, you know, I may need some help. All right, so um, let's see. OK, yeah, so basically I want to figure out what affects rankings in the first place, particularly the things that I can currently, you know, measure, right? Um, I wanted to start out with the stuff that's visible on the, on the SERP page, because people talk about that. It's like the first thing that you do as an SEO is you, is you actually scan the page. And there's a lot of... Um, what almost seems like, it's expert knowledge, but it feels like to SEOs, it feels like instinct. You look at it and you're like, oh, instinctually I know that this is a more difficult keyword to rank on, but what are those cues? And in my experience, when you have this sort of expert knowledge that feels like instinct, if you can, if you can put any, any, any amount of that into code and then do it like a billion times a second, you've got like the makings of a great algorithm. So, um, uh, so here, anyway, here's, let me talk about my methodology real quick. Um, in order to compare, in order to figure out what, what ranking factors, ha what, what factors, you know, uh, what metrics affect rankings, um, what I do is I take each individual metric, like uh, keyword and title, and I reorder the top 50 search results as though they're the only factor that Google uses to sort the search results. Um, so if... If one through, you know, if, if the keyword is in title, you know, twice, then, you know, okay, then that's the number one result, and down at the, you know, down at the bottom, there's no keyword in title. Um, so if that's what, we, that's what we pretend, and then what we do is we compare that uh, to the way that Google actually does rank it. So it kind of looks like this, right? So this is keyword hits in title. You see this, uh, this column right here. Um, I actually don't have the actual text here um, because it would be really wide. Uh, but ultimately, this is the this is the metric for keyword hits in the title. Uh, for basically, what I'm saying when I say keyword hits, I mean uh, it has one gallon beverage dispenser. One, two, three, four. That means that there's a, so it's not an exact. In this case, it's uh, the number of times that there's a partial hit. Um, so then we sort them, right? And then we compare these differences. And the way that we compare the differences is using um, what's called a uh, what's called a Pearson. Or, I'm sorry, Spearman's correlation coefficient. Um, and so technically, if you know anything about if you know about Spearman's, the this this sort order isn't exactly right, but it gets the point across. It's you actually have to account for ties, but we and we do. Um, so um, when I apply this this methodology, I can see a correlation between uh, certain metrics. And these are not super strong correlations. I, I should explain real quickly what a correlation coefficient looks like. It ranges between negative one and one. And one is basically, that is the exact same data. One means that's a perfect, perfect match. It's not necessarily the exact same data, but if we got the Google search results in the exact order that Google put them, we would have a correlation coefficient of one, okay? Um, if we have our data completely backwards, then we would have a correlation coefficient of negative one. If we have a correlation coefficient of zero, that means it's pure white noise, right? So 
these, these correlation coefficients are relatively small, but they also have a small margin of error. So what we're looking at here is when I say 0.1, that means it's not like a very strong signal. Google doesn't rank their, uh, their search results exactly based on result is homepage or number of keyword hits in title, which we know intuitively. But what I can say is that with a, you know, maybe a plus or minus of, of you know, this, this, this top one could maybe range between 0.09 and 0.11. Um, it's actually a smaller uh, margin of error than that um, because I'm looking at like 65,000 rows of data. So it's, it's pretty huge. So anyway, what we found was that of the things that you can see on the SERP, result is homepage is the biggest, keyword hits in title is the number two. But what I found interesting here was that keyword hits in the URL was very small. Um, I've always heard that keyword hits in URL is a, is a big deal. Uh, I'm sorry, putting the keyword in the URL is a big deal. And what I want to point out is that keyword hit, uh, this, this, this particular metric, keyword hits in URL, actually also contains exact match domains because I'm looking at the full URL. So if it's an exact match domain, that's also in there. So this thing should be dragging this number up. Um, so I wanted to drill down deeper into that and see like, is that true? I mean, I'm double checking my work. I've always heard that that's actually kind of a, kind of an, an important thing. So I drill in, right? And here's the domain only. This is exact match domain only. And this is the URL without the query string. So really not a big difference between the full URL. So this was, see, this is this 0.05 and this is this 0.05. Those are the same ones, okay? Number of keyword hits in URL. This would be number of keyword hits in URL. But then when you drill down deeper, it's like putting it in the path is as close to white noise or putting it in the subdomain or literally not even the first level of the path, but like anywhere in the path or the page name or the query string or anything after the, after the domain is nearly white noise. Because remember, this might be a plus or minus of 0.01. Um, so it's very, very close to zero correlation. And, but there's nothing to say that it, it has a negative impact. It's just that refactoring your, your URLs so that they they have the keyword in them probably isn't the first order of, of work. Um, you could spend a lot more time getting the right titles, I mean, uh, or, uh, or, or whatever. Um, but there is some evidence that putting the keyword in the query string could potentially, I mean, there's a negative correlation with it, right? It's a very, very small negative correlation, but it's a negative correlation nonetheless. So what that means when I say negative correlation is it may actually negatively impact your rankings. Probably not going to negatively impact your rankings, but it could. It's associated with low, uh, low ranked keywords or low, low ranked results. Okay. So I wanted to find out, and this is like, you know, sort of what I do is I want to figure out whether or not I can combine any of these factors, these on page visible things together to make a super metric, right? And in my experience, I've done a lot of algorithms and stuff like that. It, usually, you actually don't do much good by combining things together. Um, usually, it's, uh, it's, it's, if it's, and if it is good, it's like 10% better. So it doesn't usually pay off really well. Um, but, you know, I search for those needles in a haystack. That's what I do to try to make everything that we do better. And so I was actually able to figure out a way to combine. Uh, and I forgot to put this on the slide exactly what I combined. It's like um, keyword and title um, and result is homepage and uh, I'll try to publish this later. I need to put that, on, put that on the slide, but I ultimately was able to, I'll, you know what, I'll do this after the presentation. I know where it is. I have the, uh, I have the, the formula someplace. If anybody wants what the formula is, I'll happily disclose it. Um, but anyway, I was actually able to combine uh, several of these on-page si signals together to create one that actually correlates better. 30% um, better than the best one. So that's cool. So what we're doing here is, is, is not exactly what Google does. Google may have millions of pages, 
that it could push to the top result. Um, and what we're doing is reordering the top 50, right? So we're basically trying to reconstruct exactly the identical tip of the iceberg without taking any of the rest of the iceberg into account, right? And the truth is that, I mean, we could go a thousand results deep, but like you can't get, you know, there's a certain level past which you can't get, uh, you can't get all of Google's results. So, you know, we're doing the top 50, which is more results than anybody has ever taken into account in doing this sort of a study. But, uh, but I think that the growth actually matters, right? Metrics that, that get better as you go from the top 10 to the top 20 to the top 30 to the top 40, the deeper you go into the SERPs, the more fundamental that is of a ranking factor, right? Because before you get to the top position, you have to get to the top 1,000, and be, you know, before you get, uh, and then you have to get to the top 100, and then you have to get to the top 10, right? Um, but if you really want to understand the way that Google ranks, you need to try to predict you know, deeper down the results than, you know, the top 10 or the top 30 or the top 50 or, or whatever. So I look at growth, okay? And you can look at this, and this is basically, um, what this is, is the correlation coefficient plotted based on, you know, okay, so this is the top, let's see if I can see my mouth, top 10, top 20, top 30, top 40. So ones that are, uh, these, these guys that are going up and to the right are actually getting better at predicting Google's, Google's rank or Google's results as you go, as you consider more and more of Google's documents. And the ones that are going down and to the right are getting worse and worse. Make sense? Yeah? Okay. So what this means, and this sort of should correspond to how you feel, like this is a, you know, like if you have an SEO instinct, I'm saying that keyword in title is more important than exact match domain because you see exact match domain here in purple becoming less and less important as you go down in ranks, uh, as you, I'm sorry, as you go deeper into the, uh, into the, into the results. And, um, and then you have, for example, a uh, number of keyword hits in title going, you know, going up pretty rapidly, not very actually important at all in the top 10 or the top 20, but as you go deeper and deeper, it becomes more and more important. Uh, so I think my argument is that that's a more fundamental ranking factor. So here's another way of looking at these things. And you can sort of visually see as a heat map how these, uh, each of these on-page um, or insert metrics sort of grow and how they are relative to one another. So we were talking about exact, exact keyword and title, or I'm sorry, we were talking about number of keyword hits in title and see how it goes from, you know, orange to green, and sort of, if we were to rank this 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 uh, this list here is ordered by top 50 rather than by top 10. But if it were ordered by top 10, number of keyword hits in title would be very near the bottom. It'd be third, I believe, from the bottom. Whereas, it it sort of makes a a recovery by the top 50. It it actually is is third from the top. All right, so. This is, um, I don't know, maybe a little bit of in-depth stuff here, okay? But what you can do is actually plot a linear, uh, you can linearly, linearly regress, or you could do a regression of any of these. Uh, it doesn't have to be linear. Um, and essentially figure out, well, what's the slope? You know, how fast is this thing getting better, or how fast is it getting worse? And if you figure that out, it comes out, it's, it's essentially the growth rate. It's uh, it allows you then to predict into the future, uh, uh, predict deeper into the results. So if we wanted to predict, well, what's it going to be in the top 100 or the top 200 or the top, well, I think that these things probably aren't linear forever. Um, so you don't want to go to the top thousand probably and without like maybe a better, a better model or, or something. But, um, but I, I think it's fair to like project into the top 100 or top 200 or so. So when we do that, uh, so what I ended up doing is taking this, this, uh, this 47 X and this 39 X, those are essentially, that's the growth rate. That's like, if, if you remember like, uh, I don't know, seventh grade algebra, that's your, that's the slope. Um, the slope in this case is 0.0047 X. 
And so I multiplied that by like 100,000 to make it so that it didn't like make you annoyed every time you saw it. Uh, so I may show you, I'm not sure whether or not I show you, I show you this, I show you these numbers again in like an article that I'll publish. Um, and, but these are the growth rates and so you can see um, faster growing versus slower growing. It's a simple number. Um, anyway, here's, here's this growth rate. Uh, here's what happens when we, when we use that growth rate to project the top 100, okay? okay? So you can see keyword hits and title is, has a very fast growth rate and we predict that it's going to become more significant. So it, it started out here, down, down here at 0 .08, which, which would have put it you know, somewhere in here on the list. And, and uh, because of its growth rate, by the time you get into the top 100, uh, it's a much more significant metric. Um, conversely, you have result is homepage. And does that make sense what result is homepage is? That means that the search result is actually the homepage. On a gut level, when you're just looking at a SERP and you see a bunch of homepages there, you're like, oh, this is kind of a difficult SERP. And so it, you know, that's, that's like sort of common sense, uh, SEO common sense or SEO instinct that's sort of proved to be true here. It's actually a pretty strong factor, but it becomes uh, less important as you go down, as you go deeper and deeper into the SERPs. Um, similarly, you got exact match domain. Exact match domain is actually the slowest, uh, or it's the fastest growing, it's the fastest, um, what's the opposite of growth? Losing, you know, negative growth. It, it goes down into the right the fastest. Uh, so I wanted to contrast those and give you another way of sort of visualizing this growth. So we've actually taken some of these metrics, these new things, and um, and integrated them onto SpyFu, and, and this is brand new today um, as a coincidence in, -ish, in a way, or, or, or why don't I just say that I did it for you guys? <laughs> but we actually happened to launch this stuff um, at, at about 11.30 today. <clears throat> and so you can go to SpyFu.com. This is all free stuff that I'm showing you right now. You can go to SpyFu.com, type in any keyword, and you'd be able to see this sort of analysis. Um, so you can see we're we, on a roll-up level, we're like, okay, there's two home pages in the results. Another thing that I, uh, I sort of didn't put in this, in this, in this research is uh, what happens with gov.edu domains. But that's sort of a historically interesting thing to look for, right? Especially when you're looking at like medical terms. Google is probably going to almost give a brand effect to those government and educational um, uh, domains. So we want to look for that. It gives us a sense of, of the difficulty. Um, in this case, I think I'm looking at like Lance Armstrong, um, lots of keywords in title, um, uh, meaning lots of results. This is the number of results with, key, with, with the keyword in title, um, num lots of results with keyword in URL. So it's a relatively well um, optimized page. Uh, you see, well, when you're actually scanning the SERP, we've bolded the things that you need to be looking for. You got the home page, you've got an exact match domain here. Uh, you've got the keyword in the title. So you can sort of just look and see how much bold there is too. It gives you a general you know, view uh, or uh, it, it improves your ability to scan. You've got the keyword in the URL here. Actually, I didn't actually call that one out, but you see them here. Um, in cases where you've got two, SERP, the two results in the same SERP or more than two, you, you can see that here. Um, and we also, uh, added to this thing, um, the position-based click-through curve. Um, I think that's, uh, it's funny that we've never done that before because everyone's always like, take all these keywords and put them into a spreadsheet and do this really annoying calculation that's not even, you know, that's based on like 2006 AOL data, which is the most annoying thing that you ever have to do with keywords. <laughs> and it doesn't take into account, you know, universal results or ads or anything like that. So we decided we'd put that on our new, uh, on our new um, keyword page. Um, one other thing that's sort of of note here is this domain diversity. And that, uh, that's, that basically shows you how many different domains are on this individual search, the SERP. Um, okay. So <clears throat> the next thing that I wanted to look at after looking at the, um, the, the stuff that's visible on SERPs is domain level metrics, right? So, you know, you got like your backlinks, uh, you got, um, you know, you got page rank, so on, that type of stuff. 
So when we did these, I looked at, I pulled in a bunch of Majestic SEO stuff. I was also going to pull in um, SEO Moz, uh, the, same, the same metrics from SEO Moz and the same metrics from like Ahrefs, but I did be just, just because I wanted to see how hard I wanted to work, I actually pulled in like a sample of those, of those uh, and compared them against each other. And those, like metric by metric, even for like trust flow versus uh, Moz trust, there's like a 0.91 correlation coefficients, a very, very high correlation coefficients between pretty much all of, all of those, um, um, those metrics. So I was like, well, then I'll just pull in one and see how those metrics perform. And if I need to do the other ones later, then I guess I will, but it saved me a little bit of time. Um, so uh, the best metric uh, is, is uh, trust flow from, from Majestic, um, followed by, this is interesting, just straight up domain age. And that's a metric that we pulled um, from the SpyFu database. We've, at SpyFu, we have like 79 months of, uh, of, of, of history. Uh, so you can actually look and see, well, actually you currently can't, but I can. Um, you can see, you know, every keyword that any domain ranked on, you know, six years ago. And, um, and anyway, this, this domain age thing is actually just the first time that we saw a domain show up in the ranks, uh, show up on any search result, even if it was an advertisement. Um, and so that domain age was almost as good as, as trust flow, um, in, in predicting Google's rank. I thought that was really I was surprised, <laughs> almost annoyed, <laughs> because it was so simple. Um, but yeah, because uh, I don't know, you just don't really want to believe in the whole domain age thing. And it's not exactly the same as how long ago it was registered, right? It's like actually how long it's been uh, kind of trusted by Google, if you like, uh, if you want to think of it that way. Um, Okay, so we also looked at backlinks, um, and then you see that domain page rank is is the, uh, the lowest performing. Uh, if you pay close attention to this stuff, that sh that's not a surprise. But uh, I mean, everybody uses page rank, I think, or not everybody, but I mean, you find yourself doing it even though you don't want to. Um, anyway, there's a lot of metrics, even domain age, that beat <laughs> page rank. Okay, um, so you could happily probably replace your, uh, you know, your domain page rank, you know, dependency uh, with damn near anything. Um, okay, I wanted to throw something into the mix. I, um, before I, before I even sort of thought of doing this experiment, I came up with a, uh, um, a metric my own, and I wanted to see if I could, you know, um, predict ranking results. Um, based on actual performance in the SERPs without taking into account backlink data. My idea is that this would be a good metric to combine with other metrics. I was like, oh, this is going to be great. I'm going to look at page, I'm going to look at these, um, you know, uh, backlink based uh, data points and actually eventually combine a SERP performance um, metric at the domain level with those things to make a, a better super metric. Um, this, this, uh, this domain strength is, it's not like a straightforward equation that I can just lay out for you. It's actually algorithm based, um, which means that there's a whole bunch of branching, you know, if statements and stuff like that to figure out what an actual, uh, domain strength becomes. But I use a lot of the tricks, uh, that I use to, to, to calculate SEO value. You know, the opportunity side of things that I was talking about earlier, that click through curve that we do to that takes into account uh, universal search and ads and stuff like that. Um, ultimately, we're looking at how many keywords uh, a domain ranks on, what positions those keywords are in, how many times it ranks for the same keyword, how many searches the key that keyword gets, uh, how much the keyword costs, the historical competitiveness of the keyword. A lot of different factors go into this. Um, but I'm kind of, that's kind of what we do. Um, and, uh, and so I thought I'd compare it. Um, and I will say that I was extraordinarily surprised that it beats all these other metrics because I have a lot of, I, I, I basically would not have predicted that in any, in any case, but it beats them. Um, and of course, you know, I'll release data and we should probably 
do a follow-up study to make sure that I know what I'm talking about. I'm pretty sure I know what I'm talking about, but um, we'll have to pull in a whole new set of data and, and recompare and so on. But as is, spicy domain strength does not suck. It's actually, in my opinion, uh, a very, very solid metric. Um, here's how it looks as it grows, okay? So um, all of these things actually have a pretty solid growth rate. Um, none of them you see have a negative growth rate like we saw with the other, uh, with the on-page metrics. Uh, everything here uh, goes up and to the right. Here's how this looks as a heat map. Um, so you see domain strength at the top, and actually what's interesting is that page rank has an interesting growth rate. Um, it starts out actually as a negative, in, uh, as a negative correlation, and then results uh, at, as, as well still the lowest ranked, but you know it comes, it makes a little bit of a comeback. Um, the next best metric is uh, the trust flow. I've seen trust flow and citation flow be very similar. What I think is pretty interesting is that you know there's not that much. You can look at a raw number like class C blocks and know what that's derived from and be really, really basically within the margin of error of accurate. And that's, that's backed up by basically SEO Moz. SEO Moz will compare their numbers to the class C block numbers that they have and it's basically the same. You know, so like, and the other, the other value of looking only at class C blocks if you're gonna look at back, backlink data is that it is not, um, it's not scaled to, it's, it's, it's power curved just like search volume is power curved. So you could actually divide, if you want to stick with using backlink data to, to, to estimate um, keyword difficulty or whatever, uh, you should look at like class C blocks because um, you could divide search volume over class C blocks to get basically a, uh, a really solid metric versus dividing something that's dividing into something that's scaled to like zero to a hundred. Uh, you're, you're talking about dividing a power curve into a linear curve, a linear curve, and that's just it's just going to make the big keywords always win, and so that sucks. Um, uh, so yeah. Anyway, um, moving along, <laughs> getting like weird looks from my in-house audience. They're like, "What the hell?" <laughs> I will not talk about that anymore. Um, all right, so here's the growth rate. Uh, Spicy domain strength actually has the fastest growth rate also. And you'll note that that like 186 is scaled to the same as those, uh, as these guys. So you have like 47 and 109. So like 186 is fast. 186 is fast. 155 is fast. Even 135 is a, is a strong growth rate. Um, so let's talk about how we're using this on SpyFu. Back, back to that same uh, uh, keyword result page uh, when we're analyzing the organic rankings, we have that domain strength right there. So um, you, can, you can take all of these things into account all at once in one, in one spot. All right, moving on to page rank stuff, okay? Because this is essentially the holy grail of, uh, you know, of, of estimating difficulty or, or predicting rank uh, is how many backlinks does this page have? Not like the entire domain, but this individual page. Um, and in fact, you see that these are like the best correlation coefficients that we've seen, right? Class C blocks linking to URL is the best metric there is. I love how, I, dang it. That's a, that's a blunder. <laughs> um, oh, oh, you don't know this. I could have actually maybe skipped that, but anyway, uh, I pushed forward. Um, here's the issue, is that I was only able to get page level metrics for about 40% of, of the search results. So 60% of them basically returned NAs. So it was actually, it was actually like, I was like, what do I do here? Everything else I've compared against has been, you know, the full data set, 65,000 rows or whatever. And 
now I, now I can only get a very small amount of data. Like, our, I mean, that's a, that's a significant loss. 60% of, 60% of, uh, of the, of the URLs didn't contain this page. Uh, I couldn't get any of the page level metrics back. Um, so that's sort of the weakness of it. When it's, when it's there, it's super strong, very good. Uh, page level metrics are great. Um, class C blocks linking to URL is outstanding. Even, even URL backlinks, anything's really good there. But if it's not there, um, the and you have to and you want to try to apply it universally, which I do, right? Because I ultimately want to come up with a keyword difficulty. I mean, I ultimately end up having to start, try and just take these things into account, and I don't know, come up with like what is a null value. Um, but it makes it it makes it makes it a little bit more difficult. Especially, it makes it a little bit a lot more difficult when you're kind of trying to do this without the benefit of an algorithm and you're just sort of looking at, 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 at a SERP and, you know, have some numbers. But um, anyway, here's how this worked out, right? The growth rate was also very different. The top here we have, you know, this is, this is the best case, right, where we, where we filtered out all of the, the rows where we didn't have page level metrics and down below is the full data set and you see that, you know, you're going from yellow to green or or red to orange, basically you're you're getting more, you're getting colder or whatever it is, you're getting better uh, as you go from top 10 to top 50. Whereas the opposite is, is true when you're when you're doing this um, with the full data set, and that actually makes sense, right? The further you go down the search results, the less likely they are to have um, page level metrics because those are like those those pages. Are just not as popular, probably. I mean, just statistically speaking, uh, you will end up having less data points on those. So here's how the whole thing looks, okay? Um, and what I did here, this is actually the best case scenario for the the, the, the page metrics. Um, so what I did was I tried to combine several of these data points to come up with like really the foundation for my keyword uh, for my keyword difficulty stuff I wanted to say okay what can I actually do to really you know do the best job I can and you see there's a big a big jump here between um, between you know the best individual metric and then the best uh, and then just this set of super metrics so I was actually able to come up with four super metrics that all outperformed everything else even basically the page level metrics on their best day, right? I can actually apply on page signals plus domain strength, right? Or basically it's like on page signals times domain strength, taking no, no page level metrics into account whatsoever and, and actually beat the page level metric, okay? So the very best, the holy grail, the perfect metric, right? The page level backlink data is not as good as on-page signals plus domain strength, which is actually a fairly huge surprise to me. Uh, of course, we can make it incrementally better by taking on-page signals, domain strength, and and then these uh, page level page level citation flows. What I actually used, which is right, uh, which is right uh, someplace. Where's citation flow? Oh, there it is. Um, so I maybe should try that with class C blocks. That would be kind of cool. It didn't occur to me to do that at the time, but uh, um, I should probably do that to see if, see if I can actually really do well. But mm, yeah, anyway. So uh, that's kind of the, the big surprise for me is that I was, I was able to like beat those backlink metrics. Here's what this thing looks like as a big old heat map. Um, so you see that there's pretty good growth um, in all of these top metrics. They're not like slow growth. Here's what that growth looks like if we were to project 200 results deep. Um, because this growth here for these guys is actually stronger than the growth here for these guys, this separation becomes nearly 50% once you project further down into the SERPs. So, how are we using this? Uh, basically, so what I did is I took, I took these metrics and, and effectively used them to calculate the keyword difficulty. You know, this is a, 
end of my mission, right? Uh, there's actually a few steps in between, but yeah, I'll save you the horribly boring math part there if you're not already horribly bored by the math. <laughs> so, um, uh, so you look at the same, same search page that I was talking about, uh, and we got ranking difficulty right here front and center. Um, we also have it integrated, you've probably seen it before, into the, uh, into the organic search uh, SERP analysis. Um, you, uh, one thing that I didn't mention before, but this is really interesting for the Martha Stewart one, is that we have these social domains. And so, surprise, surprise, Martha Stewart's on Pinterest. Um, I would be interested to see how this affects, I've actually looked to see how this affects um, um, the SERPs, and I can't find an exact pattern yet. Um, I've actually looked to see what social in the SERP actually does, uh, to, to, but um, it doesn't, it's not like have, be, have, having Pinterest, Pinterest doesn't necessarily rank high on the, on the SERPs, and um, Twitter doesn't necessarily rank high on the SERPs. I actually believe there is, I did look and see, oh yeah, is result from Wikipedia. So this isn't that strong of a signal and it trends downward. I use that as a bit of, as a baseline. So I want to figure out a way to algorithmically incorporate social and domain, or social and SERP, but I can't quite, but you could, you know, you've got that, that gut level instinct uh, as an SEO looking at this, oh, okay, MarthaStewart.com, 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 Wikipedia, Martha blog, Martha Stewart weddings, and then Pinterest and Twitter, it's like, okay, it's gonna be hard for me to get above those, right? Um, and, then, and then you look here and there's 30, there's 30 MarthaStewart.coms in the SERPs. <laughs> See, your domain diversity is like 39.6%. So it's an, that's, that 245 is a really high uh, keyword difficulty. And so we captured it well, but I feel like, you know, looking at these socials, uh, social signals and, uh, and domain diversity could potentially improve. You could use that to hone your skills. Um, but, you know, we provide it. It's just that I haven't captured it in an algorithm yet. And so that's sort of what I'll be working on. Anyway, so I've got a little bit of time for a quick demo of, uh, of, of the other place that we're integrating this. And that's in, in our, our keyword research, which is uh, Keyword Smart Search. So I just put in like an interesting niche here, ultrasound technician, and what you can do here is actually filter by SEO difficulty, right? So I want something that's less difficult than a 100, and that's gonna filter for me. And really, I wanna make sure that it's got a difficulty. So I want it to be greater than 25. And then I also want this to, let's see, have, I definitely don't want it to be zero. Let's go with five or more searches a day and see what we get. Okay, so you can see what we're doing. I could actually try and figure out like cost per click. Let's see, maybe, um, maybe I could do $2 or more. I haven't actually done $2 or more, that'd be interesting. But you can sit here and do this with keyword smart search all day. Oh, look at that. Those number one results that I was looking at were still pretty good. Diagnostic ultrasound program, some easy difficulty, 56.9, and a high cost per click. Not a bad search volume, I mean, for the cost per click. So you can now use this. We've just, just now made it so that you can, uh, you can start refining you know, your keyword research um, based on this stuff, and we'll be integrating uh, keyword difficulty pretty much all over the site in various different ways, you know, going forward. Um, but that is, that is all I got. Did I, did I go over? Did I stay in, in bounds? I don't know. Do we have any questions? Okay, my guy, I just had to unmute my, yeah, yeah, I just had to unmute myself. Give me a second here and oh. uh, let me, cool. let me get no, I can hear you. Okay, good deal. Just let me get back this, back over here. Um, okay. Let me get back to the screen here. Okay, uh, I well, first I'll, I have a question here, Mike, and then I'll like, like to yeah. uh, also uh, you know ask uh, members of our team, um, you know what their thoughts and comments are, uh, what they see. Uh, 
first off, you know, I know one thing I noticed uh, when you were showing the uh, the the URL keywords in the URL. One thing I noticed was the keyword prominence of the keyword uh, in your screen. Uh, the keyword prominence, if it was a string, that that the keyword had a quite a bit of prominence. It was in the front. Uh, now going through you know some other results that you might have had. Do you also notice that in other uh, search results that the, the keyword prominence plays a big part in the uh, the ranking in the URL string? Well, no, actually, I mean, I found quite the opposite that the keyword in the okay. URL was uh, was really poorly correlated, almost white noise. Um, I guess you know when you look at these search results, uh, the ones that I was showing, um, uh, you can actually see that the keyword tends to be in the URL, but that doesn't make any difference. It doesn't seem to impact search ranking at all. Like okay. maybe not at all at all. Like seriously not at all. Like okay. it may actually, my finding is in essence zero. I would say it's as close to white noise as anything that I've seen. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, and one, one comment I want to make, uh, you know, before we start taking some of the questions here, you know, I'm, I'm looking, you know, you, you mentioned your team kind of, you know, the, the looks on your, your team. My team here is kind of the opposite way. I, you know, I got some geeks here that work with us, you know, David and Steven, and their just eyes are just popping out, you know, what they've seen here. And just so, you know, those, awesome. of you, those of you that are on this webinar right now that might just seem a little bit overwhelmed by uh, Mike's presentation, <laughs> uh, you know, Mike did mention in the beginning that, you know, he has the program, he sells the program, this is where he makes his money, and he does not do any consultation in here uh, as far as, you know, if you were to call Mike or a member of his team, he would not, you know, sit down with you and work with you. However, we do do this. Uh, this is part of some of the things we do. So if this is something you like to have integrated, maybe look a little bit more into, you know, our team, uh, David and Steven, are going to be implementing a lot of the things uh, that Mike presented in today's webinar in our site reviews. So if there's a, you know, if you're interested in uh, using uh, these metrics or uh, what Mike presented here. However, you're just not really sure how you know how to implement that. We can help you do this. Uh, now, Mike, we got we have a d bunch of questions here. Uh, whoops, let me go back and bring that screen back here. Um, oh, good. I don't think that I can see him. Um, okay, do you I see my screen? Oh, I know. I see, I see the question, so I'll, I'll ask them to you, Mike. Um, yeah, yeah, that sounds good. All right, now we have a bunch of questions here. Uh, you know, is there going to be a replay of this webinar? Uh, because either they were too late or something. Yes, there will be a replay. Uh, typically, it takes us, uh, you know, a couple of days to render the video um, and to do the things we need to do. But here in the next couple of days, we'll have the webinar, a uh, replay of the webinar. We'll send a link out to everybody that like to see this again. And please, again, share it with your friends. Uh, this is a question yeah, from... Yeah, we, we'll, we'll also publish some, I mean... I'll probably break this into uh, the presentation into a few articles, um, and we'll republish it along with the data and uh, um, you know the slides and presentation and stuff. It'll take us uh, not too long. <laughs> we'll see how long that takes. Uh, somehow, it always seems easier for me to explain these things like in person than like when I write it down. I don't know why. Okay. Uh, or yeah. not, I don't know. Maybe it just came like off horribly. <laughs> no, you did great. You did, this is a great webinar, Mike. And I, you know, I'm, 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 I'm literally me and my, me and my team are just sitting here, just awestruck about your presentation because you, you know, you over delivered, my friend. You know, you did a great job. Um, now these are I'm some glad. questions. These are some questions from uh, you know, our members that are on the webinar tonight. And uh, Mike, if you, if you just maybe grab a pencil or maybe have somebody on your staff that are sitting behind you. Maybe to kind of select the best question out of all these, and what we're going to do at the end of uh, the webinar is uh, sure. give, we're going to award one free hour consultation with myself. Um, so yeah. this is a question from Cora Lynn. Do you think low competition, high volume are the best words? So basically, she's going back to the what I would consider like the long tail keywords. Do you think uh, that's the best uh, strategy to use when you know looking for keywords for your particular niche? You know, long comp low competition, high volume. I mean, uh, that's obviously a good. Um, I would probably include, you know, like the value of the volume. 
personally. I try to look and see how well, you know, because generally speaking, high cost per click keywords are more transactional in nature and low cost per click keywords are more informational or navigational in nature. And um, so, you know, if, if your goal is to convert somebody, then you'll probably want to take a, to take, you know, CPC or, or cost per day or something like that into account. And we have those filters if, you know, if I were uh, um, in, in Keyword Smart Search there, you can actually just filter by cost per day or cost per click or, or do those sort of same sorts and, and filters. Okay, and, uh, our, and, and she just replied, uh, yes, after seeing this makes sense. So CPC that are higher, she, she just replied to that. Uh, and she thanks you for that. Um, question from uh, E. Rock Christopher. He's out in, um, in the Avondale area. He's an Arizona native here. Um, uh, e. Rock's uh, question is, uh, can we actually buy SpyFu at the end of this presentation? Your site says it's closed. Uh, one thing, you know, uh, we will send out a link uh, for those of you that want to learn more about SpyFu. And I'll be honest with you guys, it's going to be an affiliate link. Um, just kind of help uh, pay for any of, you know, our, our costs and putting this webinar on. Um, so we, we'll send that link out. Actually, it's posted on the sign-up page. But, Mike, uh, we're, we have a couple comments here saying that they tried to sign up and they, uh, your site is saying it's closed. My site says that it's closed? Yeah, that uh, they I've, tried. Uh, it's closed to new customers. www.spyfu.com. S P Y F U dot com. Yeah, okay. Just can go to the website directly. Uh, we had a couple. It's maybe a, it was it's the up affiliate. for me, and I. I, I maybe it was the, the affiliate will... link that you know. Maybe it was the affiliate link we sent out earlier that it says. Oh, that could be. So. So. Um... We'll click check on, on the it. affiliate link. We'll check on it a click little on the further. Affiliate link, and I'll tell you what. Hop on live chat and ask Danielle, um, and we'll give you any of your anybody that's on the line here. Uh, we'll give twenty five percent off their first month. Okay, that's, that's hey downgrade. guys. You, okay, log in. Repeat that again. So you, you know, uh, you, you guys yeah, you are going to get twenty five percent off. Click click on your affiliate link, right, and then go to live chat and talk to Danielle. We'll, I can see her from here. Uh, or actually I can't, but somebody is walking in there to tell her and, um, and, 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 you know, tell her, tell her that you're on the webinar and, and we'll give you a 25% off the first month. Well, thank you, Mike. That's great. So you're going to be saving some money on that. Um, this is a question from Steve. How does the value no, make it 50%? We'll make it 50% off the 50 first month. 50% off. Listen to this guy. 50% <laughs> off the first month. 50% off the first month. Wow. That's, you know, Guys, you know that, that that's a cool offer. So you know, uh, you know, just log into live chat, let them know that you're on this webinar, and uh, you know, get that done. Uh, this is a question from Steve. How does the value concept transfer to the nonprofit world? Um, let me. I'm going to have to click on this to get a little further of what he's he's asking here, and then go back uh, over here. Um, I.e., they offer their services for free and want to compete against the other websites that have fee for service providers. So uh, does that make sense um, to you, uh, Mike, his question? Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, the, the, the question is, uh, it, it sort of goes to, and I had a slide in here, but I, I like jumped over it. Do you want to Yeah, I can give you back and, 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 Sure, hold on one second here. Yeah, cool. OK, uh, you got, you're the presenter again, Mike. All right, let's see here. Go from the beginning, blah, 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 blah. No, 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 no. So ultimately, you need to figure out what your goal is, right? And, and, and I'm not quite sure. I mean, I know what, non, not, what nonprofits would be doing, but it seems like probably like a lead gen thing. Um, I'm not actually sure what the model is. Um, and I don't know that like all all nonprofits have the same model. I know that you can certainly be selling uh, things on your uh, on your nonprofit, or you could just be, you know, based on you know trying to get the word out, so that'd be like more content driven, um, or you could be trying to get people to, you know, sign up, give their information, so that'd be more like a lead gen thing. Um, but in my mind, nonprofit and profit are really not that different. They all have they both have business models. The question is really only whether or not, at the end of the year, you want to have profits. So, so, but, but then again, I don't know much about nonprofits. <laughs> I run businesses for I, I run businesses for profit, so I could be like just completely wrong. 
but mm -hmm. if it, if I were looking at it, I'd try to like say, okay, what are, what's our ultimate goal? Yeah. What are we trying to achieve? Yeah. Uh, this is another question from Iraq. Uh, what was the sample size of your uh, your study? Uh, and was this just one keyword search when you were doing your study? How you know how broad did you get on that? So it was 1,389 keywords, the top 50 results. So it turned out to be about 65-ish thousand results. Wow. Uh, this is a question from Mark Lund. Uh, how are you? How, how are you coming up with your X and Y formula? X and Y formula? I'm yeah. not quite sure what that. Okay, I'll ask. Uh, what, in regards to the the the. Uh, is he talking about the Spearman? Yeah, the Spearman correlation coefficient deal. I believe so. Yes. Okay, hold on one second. Um, you can still see my screen, right? Yes. This would be me writing, and oh, at the bottom here is a bit of a a deal about my methodology, and part of that is. Here's this little link right here. If you are the guy that's asking that question, I'll, I'm not sure where I can paste this, but it's uh, a short link. You've got the link. chat box there. Uh, you can post it in can the I chat box. Can I paste it right into the chat box? Yeah, post it right Will into the work? chat box and then send that out to everybody. Okay. So that is how you can calculate Spearman. Um, I actually use something somewhat more, I don't know, like programmery. But um, but I actually started out doing it that way, and that's just basically using Excel and doing a scatter plot and taking um, uh, basically making a scatter plot and then doing a linear regression on it, which gives you an actual R squared, and then you just basically take the square root of the R squared, which gives you Spearman. Okay. Um, question for another. Oh, so I I, re I just pasted it to. Not everybody. I need to paste this to everybody. Okay, you, you paste it. Uh, I can only send it to organizers. And okay, panels. well, I, I could got, I could I could grab it here, Mike. Hold on a second. Okay. Uh, actually, I'm gonna have to go to the page here and uh, click on your link, and then I could grab it and then I could post it in here. Um, Let's see if I have. Uh... All right, so I'm, re I'm gonna. Re I just Wait. sent out the link to everybody. Yeah. So here's here's what like here's like the um, this is not I didn't put this in the slide, but I did this myself. Um, this is the correlation between Moz domain authority, SEO Moz domain authority, and its five domain strength. And so this is the, similar to what what I do, right? I basically do an X Y plot in Excel. And then you do, you basically right click on it and then do like add trend line. Um, and then that lets you choose to do linear or whatever. Do a linear regression and then that also calculates this thing called um, R squared value. R squared value is, I believe, Pearson's or something in this case. Um, or no, it's not, it's actually not Pearson's. But if you basically take this, the square root of that number, which I did right here, take the square root of the same number, 0.588, that gives you the, peer, the, the Spearman correlation coefficient. That DGO thing there um, is, in essence, is going to show you how to do that. Um, but anyway. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. Another question from Mark, and I, I, I noticed this in, in your slides uh, when you, you were going over this, but just to, you know, uh, maybe cover it again. Uh, does PageRank matter anymore? Does Google PageRank ma matter anymore uh, in your in your view? Google PageRank, right. In my opinion, Google PageRank is the, uh, not in my opinion, the data show, <laughs> the data show that, um, and I'll find this slide here, that it's the least important factor. And in fact, talk about trying to get um, page page level metrics. Getting page rank at the page level, I got like 
I got okay. such a small number that I didn't even include it in here. I actually did it, but then it was just like it looked so bad. Um, even when I even when I gave it the best case scenario, it was like you know point you know point oh seven or something like that. It wasn't very good at all. Um, and there's just so many other things that are better that are just as easy to calculate. If you can just look at number of results on the home page, number of um number of home pages in the SERP, and that's like what almost fifty percent better at least 40% better, uh -huh. 0.07, right, versus 0.11. That's just counting the number of uh, results in the home page, or, or results that are home, search results that are the home, that are a home page. Okay, cool. All right. Um, this is a question from uh, David. Uh, I, I'll pronounce, I'll spell the last name, K-A-L-E-K-Y. Um, his question is, if he optimized the site according to your monthly program, SpyFu, and I moved up in Google, and the rank is holding its place, then I see the projection via your software has changed. Why would I re-optimize, or how would I know when to re-optimize uh, if the, you know they're staying within the same placement? I'm not sure that I follow. Is he basically arguing that if he moves up in ranks, that my algorithm is going to change? If he was number one, if he had the number one position, uh, you know, if he used your program, this is the way I'm interpreting it. If you use your program mm -hmm. and went to number one, um, and uh, and held that number one position, what can he do then further with your program to make sure he maintained the number one uh, position? Does that make sense? Oh, um, yeah. Well, I would look for other opportunities. When you're in the number one position, you obviously can't go to you know negative. Uh, you can't go to zero. So uh, ultimately, you just build additional content that sort of supports that, right? You build like your your domain strength or the ba the backlinks and stuff like that. I mean, ultimately, I sort of um, don't get into giving advice very much on exactly what SEO work or how you should do your SEO work. I try to focus on um, sort of uh, uh, being a independent third party that that gives you uh, that gives you the metrics. Um, I mean, I have my ideas. But I'd actually defer to to your judgment, right? Okay, I just had a I had, just had the doorbell ring. I had to run to the doorbell. Um, oh. Okay, what is the range of your keyword difficulty scores? And this is a another question for Rerock. Um, it looks like it goes to about 300, um, but it's not. I didn't put it on a. Uh, I didn't want to compress it down to like a, a linear scale. Um, so it's actually non-linear, um, but I've, I haven't seen personally anything over 300 yet. Um, and you know, you can certainly get down to zero or, or so. Um, but the idea of not having it go from like zero to 10 or zero to 100 and like squeezing everything in there is that you can effectively use it to divide your opportunity into. So if you have something that has um, we would call it like click value per day or click value per month, uh, meaning essentially the number of clicks that you expect to get based on the number one position times like the adjusted CPC value. You would uh, you would be able to divide that number into the uh, difficulty and not have big keywords always dominate, because that's that's sort of the weakness in any in any system that there is right now is that. You know, basically, you divide like a free credit report versus, um, you know, I don't know, something with a low volume, <laughs> cheap tickets to India. Um, <laughs> free free credit report's always going to win, even though cheap tickets to India might actually be a better keyword because it's easier to rank on and because it's more transactionally targeted there's a lot of reasons that it could be better but free credit report would always win because it gets like you know uh, people spend ten thousand dollars a day on it and it gets a pretty decent volume okay uh, we, we're just going to take we have a literally you know quite a few questions here mike and uh, I, i'm just mm -hmm. going to take three of these out here i mean we probably have about another 50 questions um but I'm, I'm, we're, we yeah That's but a I'm, lot of questions yeah uh but what, what if we'll you do send is them we'll over, pick... I'll answer them all. Okay. What I'll do is uh, yeah. What I'll do is I'll send them back. What I'll do is I'll I'll save this and I'll send them out to you. Um, awesome. 
And uh, anyway, uh, the one question here, uh, you know, what was the affiliate link? Uh, just go. I just put in the chat box the link to uh, that sign up page. And on that sign up page is the affiliate link uh, to sign up for uh, SpyFu. And uh, just remember to, you know, do live chat. And what was that person's name again, Mike? I forgot. Danielle or whoever answers. Or whoever answers. Okay, just use live chat and say you're on this webinar and that you want to get that 50% off uh, for the first month. Um, this is a question. Um, actually, there's a lot of duplicate questions here. So anyway, um, this one is asked about six times. What's the best? And I'm going to take uh, Patrick's because he's uh, on top of the list. He was the first one to ask this. What's the best way to use SpyFu with a brand new website? I, you, so on SpyFu, you can type any domain name in and see every keyword that that domain ranks on. And so that's that's sort of our that's sort of our our thing, right? Is that you can you can figure out what your competitors are doing right. Um, and we don't just tell you here's the list of keywords. We actually tell you here's the list of keywords. Uh, on SpyFu, there's there's a couple of different things that we um, that we focus on, and that is that um, people on AdWords, for example, don't they'll waste a lot of money on AdWords, but they don't waste a lot of money for a long time. So we look at history as a very important indicator um, and, and use it as a process of elimination to figure out what's profitable, right? Because eventually they stop. Even the even the people that are lazy stop buying keywords that are uh, that they're losing money on. Um, from an SEO perspective, you can look and see like what are the keywords that they've managed to rank on. What are the pages that have been their most effective pages? Uh, you know, sort of which link bait that they have and that type of deal. Um, and you use it you use it in conjunction with um, you know like exploring backlinks and so on. Um, the other thing that that I thought I'd drop as a mention is that um, is that you can also track like SpyFu tracks keywords. Um, you know, we do we we have our own list, but if you want us to track a different set of keywords, you can actually, as a as a subscriber, you can actually add in keywords for us to track. Um, not only can you track them weekly on SpyFu and do that do the sort of um, SERP tracking thing that you can do used to be able to do with Raven, um, you know, looking at the top 100 in in uh, Google and Bing, um, but you can actually also add those keywords to expand, you know. Our list, so it'll also pick up your competitors. Okay. Um, it's it's sort of uh, not the most you know commonly known thing about SpyFu is that you can actually track keywords. Um, uh, we have a SERP tracker. Uh, it integrates with our SEO reports. Um, you know, basically our SEO sales reports. And oh, cool. So uh, this was a, that was a question I was asked just before your webinar. And so, Mark, there you go. Mark Goodman, good, Mark Goodman asked me that question just about 15 minutes before the webinar. All right. Uh, two more questions here, Mike. Um, this one's for Jose. Uh, when will SpyFu be available for different countries uh, slash languages? That's a good question. Uh, it's it's uh, it's available for the UK, um, and I suspect someday. Um, but we we keep wanting to focus on making the actual. Um, Predictions better and better and better, and basically getting, uh, you know, really conquering Google.com. Um, and the other thing is, is that it's it's a it's a challenge to do other countries well because we essentially want to spend as much money as we can. I mean, the spy food thing is uh, the the Google the Google.com thing is is sort of the biggest thing, right? And so we. Uh, we 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 basically want to focus all of our energy and all of our money, all of the revenue that we get from you know paid subscribers, into doing the best work we can, crunching the numbers, coming up with not just data but answers um, to that problem. And as you go down, you know, as you go down into other countries, and get, the market gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And so other people have SpyFu-like sites. For other countries, but they're not as good. They're not as much. There's not. A, there's not. Not as much data even. Like the. Like he, you know, nobody really collects full FIFU scale data sets in any other country. We happen to do it for the UK, but we're only marginally profitable doing it. And so, 
maybe when we we maybe maybe what we'll end up doing is hardware and 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 software costs or or whatever will will catch up and we'll be able to do that. But uh, but that's sort of the challenge is is we want to do a premium job. We effectively want to calculate profitability and give you a roadmap for your SEO. Um, but that's like we basically buy the biggest machines, the biggest servers that you can possibly, and they're like 400 pounds. We have lots of them, and uh, and and doing that same scale for other uh, other site, other countries is it, it 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 cuts into profitability. Okay. Uh there's a, I, I'm going to add a, a, just another question in here, uh, just because there's a number of them, and it's a real simple one to answer. Um, and the first one asked this was Mark Goodman. Uh, how about a, uh, a spy foo book or video for dummies? Do you have anything for that? You know, it's funny. We have, uh, like, my, my, my in-house uh, video guy is here. We have, like, probably 120 videos or something like that, right? Somewhere in the hundred uh, videos, um, but we uh, we and we're and we're currently producing our first ebook, um, but it's not on SpyFu and it's not on SpyFu for Dummies. But what we have been talking about uh, this year, starting this year, is really doing some more um, tutorial style, like maybe 10, 15 minute video lengths. Uh, we do a lot of we do a lot of. Uh, intro video. We have like really high quality intro videos for every one of our products, but then taking it a little bit like deeper, um, we don't have that. Um, well, we do have it, but just it's, we don't have it in every place. Okay. Uh, and, and I'd like to be able to take you from like almost like a, how do I get started with my brand new S my, my website and build an SEO, you know, build it into an SEO empire and walk you through that and have that sort of a track. And generally we have more like here's the product, here's like its features, go to town. But uh, but yeah, we're actually actively working on uh, on on I think like three or two or three Patrick. It's three three or four. He says three or four. He's got three or four scripts in the works. And uh, the the problem is that we're effectively completely overhauling you know a lot of the site. Um, so. <laughs> getting the right screenshots and stuff like that is, is a challenge, but I okay. think we, we're just about to be ahead of, of, of the curve in, in terms of... Maybe we Patrick could do a webinar online. down the road. Uh, we're, uh, spy food for dummies. Maybe we could do schedule a webinar down the road. I know. Uh, these are the best things. Like, just, yeah. just oh, it gives me a nice deadline. I have to yeah. sit down and do it. <laughs> All right, the last question. coffee to get myself amped up. The last question, and uh, Pete, it's from Pete, and Pete uh, won the... Um, uh, free consultation last week so you know please don't put him in the mix otherwise he's going to be living here with me he keeps on winning these <laughs> uh, but basically yeah. uh, Pete's question is that you know he, uh, you seem to put a lot of uh, importance in age domains do you think these are good for the uh, good for the go for the long term then the, 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 what, what domain age yeah his question basically is you you seem to in the webinar put a lot of importance on having an age domain. So do you think that this is something that's going to last for the long term? Well, see, the thing is, is if you register a domain like, you know, 13 years ago and never put any content on it, I don't really think that Google looks at that in any way, shape, or form. Um, and I'm actually not sure that, 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 that Google actually looks at that in any, as a, as a metric that they use to drive their algorithm, um, correlation is not causation. Um, it just happens that sites that show up in the uh, in the uh, in, in our database, meaning you know we've been searching the same keywords for 79 months. Uh, every month we search for the same so the same keywords, and and you know it's that consistency that gives us the ability to predict. Um, but when we look back and we're like, oh look. This site showed up, and they, in a, in, and from our perspective, they were born 79 months ago versus three months ago. Um, that has a very strong correlation, or a pretty strong correlation, with uh, with the search rankings. And so that metric, of course, I mean, that just makes sense, right? The longer you've been on it, probably mm -hmm. 
you know, it's going to correlate, but I don't think that Google takes it into account. Okay. Really. Okay, cool. Uh, and so, you know, hopefully you and your team selected somebody to be the uh, winner. But before we announce the winner, just a couple things I just want to kind of go over. Um, first off, you know, these are, you know, you know, those of you who are on the call watching this video, uh, we do quite a, like, again, we do quite a bit of uh, SEO training. And these are just some of the comments. If you go to our LinkedIn page, some of the comments uh, some of our students have said, uh, kind of written. Uh, this is from Barbara. Uh, the training that she received from our SEO training through, she's been to her, a class here this weekend. Uh, basically, she's saying it's outstanding. Uh, the video training that we have, the live instructor training, the videos and stuff like that. We also have a meetup. Those of you that are in the Phoenix area, uh, we meet once a month uh, and have a meetup. If you want more information about our meetup, um, you know, just email me. I just don't have a page on that right now. But just basically, here's the link, meetup.com slash AZSEO training. And uh, our next meetup is actually next Wednesday night. Uh, so those of you that are in the Phoenix area like to come out, it's a, basically we have a free one-hour web uh, training thing. Uh, this is Alan Buckner. He's a sales director at the American Red Cross. And, you know, Alan's very kind here. He says, well, I'm uh, without a doubt one of the best Internet marketers, practitioners, and instructors he's ever been involved in uh, dedication, profession. Professionalism is an untiring. Thank you, Alan, for that. Tom Wilkerson, uh, he has a website for online forklift certification, um, and he's, you know, basically saying that we're cut, cutting edge in marketing strategies and methods. Now, those of you that like to maybe write something on our LinkedIn page, it's LinkedIn, uh, and my name, Roy Ryer, you know, I really would welcome any uh, testimonials that you guys might have. Um, anyway, what... what in March, we're going to have our more advanced SEO training workshops. Um, on March 8th and 9th, uh, we're hosting a two-day SEO uh, workshop for the essentials. Um, and then on the 16th, we have uh, our local search workshop. It's a one-day local search workshop. Uh, there's going to be a total of actually five instructors for that one workshop here. Uh, it's going to be a really intense uh, workshop. We're going to have a lot of fun with that one. And those of you that like to learn a little bit more advanced SEO stuff uh, on March 22nd through the 24th, we have our three-day advanced uh, workshop. We're just outside of Phoenix, uh, about 65 miles outside of Phoenix. Um, you know, if you want more information about our training, some of the classes and stuff like that, just go to our website, seotrainingsw.com. There's the link right on top, SEO workshops, and you can see that there. Um, and for those of you on the call, uh, you know, I want to thank you, Mike. I want to thank you uh, for your time, your staff for your time. And who's the winner today? Who am I going to give a free one-hour consultation uh, to this coming weeks, Mike? Well, I got to tell you, I really liked the, uh, the 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 second question, which was which had which was like, oh, how can I buy SpyFu? And like, because it gave me the opportunity to be like, oh, and and, and for for everybody, it was like, oh, you get the opportunity to. Uh, Get 50% off if you hop online there. Um, but uh, the winner, voted by uh, everyone here, uh, was uh, Mark Goodman. Okay. Um, the this question or something like that, uh, or actually whatever. He actually asked several questions. So he had a couple he questions. And the last one was spy food for dummies. Uh, Mark, yeah. uh, Mark, congratulations. Uh, you know, get with me. Um, I have your email address, so I'll be emailing you or you know, Mark get in touch with me, and uh, we'll you know give you that one free hour consultation. Mike, again, thank you for your call. We will have a replay available of this webinar here in the next couple of days. We'll have it posted on the site, and everybody will be getting a link to that that participated today. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, so this is Roy Ryer from SEOTrainingSW.com. Uh, thank you for being part of the webinar. Mike, again, thank you uh, for a great webinar. You, 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 just, you blew everybody away. Thank you very much for that. Thanks a lot. Have a great night.